Okay, this is a BYBA transaxle off a of 2002 Honda Odyssey, and I'm going to show you the teardown process. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is take off the torque converter. Okay, so these teeth are what the starter um, engages when it spins up the engine. Okay, so on the side of the shaft, it looks like there's a green o-ring here, which we're going to have to replace. And here's a look at inside the shaft. Okay, on this side, I don't see any bluing, so I don't think it overheated. And I'll flip it over to show you the other side. Okay, on this side, I don't see any bluing either. But I did notice that there's this weird piece of metal here. I'm not sure if it's uh, for counterweight or if it's just some random piece of metal on here. Here's a quick overview of the transmission. There's uh, where the axle went into. Okay, so here's one of the pins that um, attached to the engine and the other pin is right here it's a circular pin and here's the shaft that the torque converter came off of okay we're going to take everything off of the outside of the transmission um, and then we're going to take off this end cover. So one of them, the first one that I'm going to take off is this. I marked it with a number five here and a number five on here. Uh, I forgot that number one starts first, so I have no idea why I did that. But basically I'm just going to mark these numbers and I'm going to refer to this video as a reference so I know where to put um, stuff back on. And I'll put these bolts back into their place once I take them out. Okay, so these two bolts are 14 millimeter, and I actually had to put my knee on here um, to break this bolt free. So you just put your weight on the transmission while you take these bolts off. And it looks like I'm gonna have to take this off before I can take this off, or. I can just do that. Okay, I'm going to use this on my drill to make it a little bit faster. And then for this one, since this is in the way, I'm just going to do it by hand. Okay, since this bolt won't come out, we're going to remove this part. 
Okay, this bolt right here that's holding the bracket on is 10 millimeters, and it's a hard fit, so um, use whatever wrench you have. Oh, that was actually pretty easy. Okay, so this bolt is out, and this 10 millimeter bolt also needs to come out. So put your ratchet on it, and then take this one out too. Okay, with both of these removed, this wire should come off. And the one for this one, we're gonna put back in its hole. Okay, so now this bolt can come out, and I've put a 1 on here, and on here, on the side of the case, I put a 1, and just so I can reuse this number, I already used 5 here, so I put a 5 on the bolt here, and a 5 right here on the case. So there's the five on the bolt. Okay, these bolts are gonna have to come out anyways because they're holding the case together. But for now I'm gonna leave these bolts loosely in here, including this one. Since we've already started removing this uh, range sensor, we're just gonna remove the rest of it. So for this cover, this metal cover here, 10 millimeter bolt, Looks like there's another one right here, so we're going to take that off. Looks like I already loosened this from before, so... So there's one, and this is the other one. Okay, before we take this cover off, just notice that this goes over the cover, not under it. So now we can put the original bolts back in the hole. So there's the hole that it came out of. And the other one, which looks like a shorter bolt goes back into the hole right here. Okay, it looks to me like the range sensor is held in by this 10 millimeter bolt and this one over here, right there. 
So we're going to take those two off. Okay, so here's one of them, and here's the other one. So this should just come off. Unless, I'll see what, what's keeping it in right here. Okay, so basically, it's just, there's a shaft in there, and you have to just keep wiggling it until it comes off of the shaft. So there's the split shaft right there. Kind of looks like brass. And it went through this hole right here. And we're going to put these bolts back in place Okay, so just to recap, shaft went through there, um, I think it was this bolt right here, went through this hole, and this bolt right here went through that hole, and this, let's see. This right here, this metal bracket went to this bolt right here. And that bolt went through that hole and also into the cover. Okay, this wire down here is going into a sensor back there but I can't see it so I'm going to take off this transmission mount 14 millimeter bolt here and there's another 14 millimeter bolt right here so I'm going to take those two bolts off and then I'll be able to see what's going on back there
So here's the this bolt. And then this, the other bolt, was through this hole, and the transmission mount just dropped out because it was being held on by that bracket. Okay, like always, I'm gonna, I've actually already done it, but I put this bolt back in, and I'm gonna put this this bolt back in too that went to the transmission mount okay this is a 16 year old mount and the rubber actually looks like it's still okay I'll probably end up replacing it though just because I can see no no breaks in the rubber it looks okay. Now we can see why this cable wouldn't come out. It's attached to that sensor and it's bolted on by that 10 millimeter bolt. So we'll have to take that bolt out so we can take out the sensor. Okay, the bolt is out, and hopefully the sensor will just come out. Looks like we'll have to put a screwdriver in there to wiggle it out. Okay, so I just jammed a piece of metal. Um, right up here and I pried down on it to leverage um, the mount off and so if I just keep wiggling it it, sh it should come off so I tilted the transmission up and I wedged the transmission mount that I took off under here that way it gives me some free plate underneath and I'm trying to wiggle it while I pull it out this way so I try to flip it over because I had a really hard time getting the speed sensor off but obviously it dumped all of its ATF fluid out. So just be careful if you, if you try to do that. Okay, so you have to find a way to jam a flathead under here and pry it off evenly because this is plastic and it breaks easy. So I took a hammer and I lightly tapped up on here. And then I chiseled the um, the flathead screwdriver under the sensor, and you have to be really careful not to crack this plastic. But just carefully start prying on it, trying to trying to get it to budge up, and probably put another flathead on the other side so you push it up evenly, because pushing up on one side probably would crack this plastic so just be really careful and take your time okay so I've I've worked this side loose and while I'm twisting up on this side I'm lightly tapping up on this side 
it seems to be lifting up, but I can tell that the bottom of the sensor is getting damaged. You can see that it's, it's lifting up but really slowly. Okay, you can see the damage that I did to it. It looks like maybe I can reuse it. I'll see how much it costs, but it's, it's probably a really expensive part. If it's cheap, I'll, I'll get it replaced. Definitely you're going to want to replace the o-ring on it. Okay, so if we follow it, we've already taken off that bolt. We need to take off that bolt, that 10 millimeter bolt, and that one. And it should at least give us, um, make let us remove that connector so we can take off the whole cable so I've already loosened up both of these bolts and it looks like this is on top and looks like the cover is on the bottom so yeah we just disconnect this cable and this should be free and to disconnect it looks like it looks like I already did it so push here pull this out and this is probably on the bracket so, it looks like push this tab in right here, push this tab in right here, and slide it off of the bracket. Okay, yeah, push push that tab right there in and slide up slide off that. Okay, so I've got this bolt removed. So this cover should pull straight out. And that looks like a pressure switch. So We can disconnect it here and I might just disconnect the whole pressure switch. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect this anyways. Push up on push push onto the tab here. So it's that tab right there. 
and then pull the connector off and looks like the easiest way to get this part is take off this 10 millimeter bolt here and there's another one right there that's kind of tricky so I'm going to use an offset wrench and it's it's also 10 millimeters Okay, so now this, this is free, and this is free, so, okay, we're going to remove this speed sensor right here, a 10 millimeter bolt. And that was a lot easier than the other one. And this one's got an O-ring right here that you'll want to replace. I don't remember if I said it or not, but the other one, the one that was hard to get out, um, this one also has an O-ring right there. Okay, we're going to remove this oil passage body. Looks like maybe this bolt this bolt which is a 10 millimeter this 10 millimeter this one and that might be it Okay, just use your flathead and try to pry up evenly all around this. Looks like the long bolt was in this hole. Okay, it looks like what was holding it in was um, this pipe right here and that pipe. Just try not to, to bend it, just keep working at it and try to get it a little bit at each corner at a time.
What's really weird about this thing is it says Mets won, just like the baseball team. <laughs>